Sorry, I'm late this morning, kept you waiting. And uh, before we get into today's X-Files decode, this peculiar episode that came out, I think, in the 1990s that seemed to reveal the parable of the wheat and the tares. The mark, in this case, is a tattoo. Before we get into that, I wanted to share this amazing channel that I found that tells the true story about Rushkin life. And this is just a couple, regular average family, family, sorry, and basically they sh they go through the grocery stores and supermarkets and what appears to me is that this is the way that america used to be shelves full stocked full with all kinds of variety of things to eat drink cook farm play with very clean stores organized and they actually go and look at their own gas prices, which amount to about a dollar and fifty cents a gallon. Now he does all the conversions for you during some of these videos, and this channel is taking off because they're actually telling the truth. Now, it's funny because of course YouTube doesn't like this, right? Because it goes against the mainstream narrative. But the way that they have their channel constructed, there's no possible way a channel like this should get canceled. They're simply sharing the truth about their daily life in Rushka. And I can tell you this. This is the way that America used to be. You know, I used to, when I was younger, I would look at these stores. And I'm like, how? what's propping all this up? How is it that we have about 17 to 20 different types of mustard you could buy? And how, who buys all this stuff? And doesn't it go bad on the shelf? These are the questions I was asking myself when I was a child. And in my younger years. And I'm like, there's no way that we can sustain this kind of economy. But yet, here you see, this is the name of the channel. It's called Dan uh, Shikaz. I think that's probably Russian. They just had a new baby. And as you can see, they've got 250,000 subscribers. But all their videos hit like a million views. And anytime you see more views than subscribers that tells you the channel is doing very very well so now the first thing that people are going to say is oh well if you like it so much in rushka why don't you go live there that's the right left paradigm speaking okay to rephrase that what they really want to say is choose us or them that's what they're really saying when they say oh if you like it so much just go live there because at the end of the day, that's the only comeback that they have. They, they don't want to address why that is the case, why their gas is so cheap, why their food in their, in their grocery stores and supermarkets are so cheap compared to our food. And we sit here as Americans and we just take it. Meanwhile, wages have not gone up significantly over the past 30 years that I've been in the workforce something's got to give why is this happening why are there so many really really rich people running around in america and then working class people get the shaft why is that so i encourage you to check out this channel it's actually very encouraging they're a very positive couple they don't get into a lot of the uh, conspiracies that you and i talk about they just stick to the facts they show what their life is like they go in and out of stores they tell you the price conversion to dollars they go to gas stations do gas comparisons and i'm thinking to myself wow you know our media sure does you know spend a lot of time talking about how evil and horrible it is to live in rushka and this couple's doing just great now i'm sure that if you're at the top of government and you're trying to change things it could be a dangerous thing for you in that country because of the way they are set up but I look at some of the actions that we take in our country. We just call it a different name. They're still taking people out. They're still controlling things and censoring people's free thoughts. They just wrap it up in a nice pretty little package. So that you don't understand what's really going on. Look at YouTube for instance. It used to be YouTube. It used to be all of us. And now it's basically... A place for all the corporations and movie trailers to get their movies promoted and celebrities. There are very few left of us anymore on YouTube. 
that we stay here because we're able we're able to find a way to stay here because it still is the platform that's going to get you out to the most people and get your message out but there will come a day where you know at the there will be no more youtube and people are going to get tired of that they're going to get tired of that now if you didn't know already r to the t uh basically it does not exist here on youtube anymore now they're on odyssey so i went over there and i subscribed to them but you have to like physically go to odyssey to see what's going on to see the alternative perspective there is no more alternative perspective anymore about what's going on in Russia and the nuke crane now i do not and i'll say this again and i shouldn't have to keep saying this but people are locked in the right left paradigm and they think that just because you give the alternative point of view that you somehow support the actions of what's happening over there. I do not support the actions of what's going on over there. Because you, there's a lot of people having their lives disrupted and who are dying. So I'm just trying to give the alternative perspective because I was saying this about the U.S. back when we were doing the same thing. I was like, why are we doing this? One, we can't afford it. Two, there's a lot of innocent people being hurt. So, the criticism is the same. It doesn't matter who it is. So, while wow, someone's saying KJ got taken down during a live stream yesterday. Yeah, this is what they're doing, you guys. This is what they're doing. They're going through, they have real-time algorithms. Now, let's get into today's show because I know that many of you tuned in for the X-Files and this is crazy let me put a link to these people's channel first because i don't want to forget happy monday by the way and uh then we'll get into this x files episode all right so what do we have going on right here well the deeper meaning of the parable and the wheat of the tares will be disclosed here in this episode. It's pretty amazing how right on the money it is. And I believe that what the Bible is really telling us about the wheat and the tares growing up together is that the tare is in all of us. That's why they can't be separated. Think about it. Something is growing inside of something else. You can't tear it apart. You can't separate it. That to me makes more sense than, oh, there's a race over there and a race over here. It's more like an inner struggle, an inner demon, an inner battle that we have to fight throughout our life. It's the sinful tendency or what I like to call the infection because we were all infected at the garden, weren't we? And it can even be narrowed down further to the copper component in our physiology. Now, we delved into that in previous shows about how there you do have an essential need for trace amounts of copper and, if, and that it seems to find itself in the middle of everything, in the middle of cell communication and brain waves and your neurological system. It's the blue blood. Why do we call it the blue blood? Because copper oxidizes into a blue-green color. And many organisms on Earth have copper-based blood, hemocyanin. And some people have more of this concentrated in their blood and more of a dependence on it, and some people have less. Now, I don't want to get into too much of the anatomy and physiology of it because that's not really important. This is more of a spiritual discussion because it seems the entire human race has been infected with the copper serpent. So... At the end of the day, it boils down to will. Will we do good as God challenged Cain to do? Or we will we let our dark side take over? Now, it's crazy because we got this whole thing going on on YouTube that likes to condemn certain races of people. Okay? And this is antichrist. This is against what Christ taught. Christ came to save everybody. He several times healed people that weren't in his bloodline. He healed Gentiles, didn't he? So, if he wasn't if if they were condemned, why would he heal them, right? This is about belief in him. People tell me that the blue bloods are condemned to destruction. 
But are they really? Look at how God tried to negotiate with Pharaoh, for instance. He could have wiped him out with the first play, couldn't he? That doesn't sound like condemnation to me. Sounds like God was trying to work with him, didn't it? He tried to give him chances. But in the case of the Pharaoh, his blue blood tendencies took over. Probably much more concentrated than in the rest of the general population because the Pharaohs, you know, talked about the serpent and worshipped the serpent. This is why God embarrassed the Pharaoh by having his rods that Aaron threw down turn into serpents and eat the Pharaoh serpent. Because then, hey, who's controlling? You know, who's the king? You know, the Pharaoh wanted to say that he was the king of the serpents, right? Because they would wear these on their heads. And But that wasn't the case. God embarrassed him. So, let me give you the backdrop of this episode before we get into this. It opens with this guy right here. And he gets a tattoo of a woman who's winking on his arm. Let me play a little bit of this for you. There it is. And the tattoo says, never again. Now this guy comes out of a failed relationship. In which he was humiliated by his previous girlfriend. And she took his children. And so he, gets the, he goes to the tattoo parlor. He gets this tattoo, never again. Like I'll never... I'm never going to go through that again. And he basically becomes a, a woman hater. But here's what happens. The tattoo marks him. And it begins to manipulate his behavior. Or possess him. Or mind control him. Let's keep playing this out here. The loser. You see, stem cells from the blood of an umbilical cord may be transplanted in the treatment of many life-threatening diseases. So, there you hear him, and he's basically a stockbroker, and he's trying to sell this stock. And he, he's explaining to, you know, to this woman on the other end of the line that it's about stem cells. A biosciences company that has developed a stem cell line from an umbilical cord to treat chronic diseases. Well, we talked a lot about umbilical cords because they seem to spiral like a portal. And when we're born, we're born into sin, aren't we? That's what the Bible tells us. So this is where the tainted blood begins, from the sinful mother to the child. So he starts hearing this woman's voice in his head, disparaging and de demeaning him. As he tries to sell the stock to this customer. Let's keep playing this here. A, a company in Tucson called Cryocord has achieved an amazing advancement in the technology of cryogenics. Such Loser. As, uh, that's your assignment while I'm gone. I want you to run an INS check and a Bureau NCIC check on these individuals. All of whom now reside in the Little Russia section of Philadelphia. I see check on these individuals. Now, here's what's weird. There's a Rushkin connection here that shouldn't really be here, right? It's a, it's a subplot or substory to the episode. And it's basically the reason why um, Scully ends up meeting the guy with the tattoo. She's basically running down a lead on this the Rushkins that she's tracking, right? And that's how she ends up running into this guy. Let's keep watching. Now, let me stop again. What could this mean? I don't really know what this means. Okay, to be honest with you, I don't really know. Other than maybe it's this is a timeline of some kind. Because as we get into this, you're going to realize that this seems, this whole story and plot seems to overlay and be a metaphor for everything we're going through right now. With, with the uh, smack scenes, with the Rushkins, and everything else. It all seems to tie in together with the labs and everything. Now, on Saturday, I uploaded a video from a video game called... What was the name of that video game? Siphon Filter. And Siphon Filter in the video game is the name of a virus. That selectively takes out people of certain races. This came out in 1999, you guys. And it's set, part of it is set in the new crane. 
There's catacombs, just like we just discussed in Odessa. So we're going to break that video game down. I just uploaded screenshots from it. I asked you guys to try to make it viral. I think it's got about 12,000 views right now. But what that really needs is for me to go through it and talk about it. Because it's so obvious it actually hurts. You can see, listen, and read for yourself that it's almost the exact plot line of what's happening right now in the world. So maybe that's what this has to do with this, this whole Rushkin component to this. Let's keep watching. Both of them now reside in the Little Russia section of Philadelphia. You and me. As long as I'm with you, no one will ever hurt you. Attaboy, lover. From now on, I'm your right-hand gal. So the tattoo starts talking to him. He's got schizophrenic tendencies here. And she says that she is his right-hand gal. You guys, what she's talking about here is the mark on the right side or the right hand so here she is here's scully now some of you are starting to notice something here that there's this red component this red hair component to all this right and what could that possibly mean well without getting hung up on race and all these things they use this as a symbol okay this is why we shouldn't get hung up on race it's the same way like you know the evil one uses owls as a symbol that doesn't mean owls are evil or monarch butterflies right so understand that this is the enemy's spiritual symbol and i don't know much more about it than that um and you know if you start delving into that and you want to start placing blame on certain races understand it's not about you and me and our races it's about the elite controllers and they might have some of these traits and attributes but they're the ones in power they're the ones who understand the attributes and try to magnify them possibly to gain control and power and they may even have special um, types of abilities and things so understand this is about control and power it's about good and evil it's not so much about what you look like or where you're from or your physical attributes so scully shows up to this tattoo shop and she's basically chasing after the rushkin but then she runs into the guy with the crazy evil tattoo let's watch you did good very nice it's just like in the window this is friend everyone gets tattoo they deserve everyone gets tattoo they deserve everyone gets tattoo they deserve just the eyes and the mouth even if i say yes it's too soon skin must so this is crazy so she's with this guy in the, she, in the tattoo shop she meets him for the first time and what now why is she over here well she was again investigating these rushkins and Mulder tells her she needs a break and so she's in philadelphia now she has her eye on this particular tattoo and it's an ouroboros now i want you to notice that they're i'm going to zoom this up here because even though this is the tattoo that she wanted I want you to notice that there is no blue in the mouth of this Ouroboros. And just keep that in mind as we continue to go through this decode. I'll pay you anything. Miss, miss, you. The color, the, the, the red on the lips, it's extraordinary. Something I find in Soviet prison. So... Let's back this up a little bit. So the guy says, look, you get the tattoo you deserve. And this is the subliminal lie that the terror blood makes you unredeemable. Okay. This is what the enemy wants you to think. Because if you really believe that, then what are you going to do? Most people are going to wage war against God, aren't they? If they think they're unredeemable, then what's the use in trying? So that is a lie. Okay. We're all watered down. 
with some of this. Cain was marked by God, but his bloodline mixed with most of humanity down through the ages, somehow leapfrogged across the flood, survived the flood because then we have the Hamite line that came through that created the ancient pharaohs, which were also giants. Nephilim, we have many stories of Nephilim giants uh, down throughout the Bible after the flood. In fact, these were the main armies that the Israelites were fighting. They were giant armies. They were Canaanites. They were massive. Many, many stories for those that want to look. The only bloodline that we know for sure remained pure were Jesus' ancestors from the tribe of Judah, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And it came down through the ages. It's all tracked. Jesus actually recounts his bloodline going back and none of those people in his ancestry mixed with the Canaanites. And that was the only instance in which God asked people to do that because he knew Jesus had to be born pure so that he could offer a pure sacrifice, right? Let's keep watching here. In Soviet prison. Tattoo reflect on body what lies in person's soul. You'd break my heart over it. Did you get them all done in prison? Yes. I tell him, everyone gets tattoo they deserve. He usually starts when... So, um, he's in the tattoo parlor trying to explain to the artist that the tattoo... That the, that the tattoo is cursed. The artist tells him that you get the tattoo you deserved. He got the mark he deserved. But this is programming to make people feel damned because of their bloodline. All flesh is redeemable if you believe in Christ, you guys. It's all redeemable. Now, Scully had her eye on the Ouroboros. And we'll get into that more later. Um, but during her date with this guy... He convinces her to get a tattoo as well. And of course she chooses the Ouroboros. And you're going to hear now. It's gonna, this is going to give you an indication as to why she chose the Ouroboros. An authoritative or controlling figure comes into my life. I've always gone around in this uh, circle. I've always gone around in this uh, circle. So, she says that her life tends to go in cycles or circles. Circles of dysfunction. Now, this is meant to make you feel helpless. Okay? Because life does feel like we're going in circles, doesn't it? Some of us keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again. But, there's no need to feel helpless or hopeless. Because, the way out of the circle is to step outside of it. And be with Jesus. And Jesus helps us do that, doesn't he? Because, think about it. Think about all the discussions we've had. Helping you to step outside the circle. Election cycles. News cycles. Right? How do we step outside of that? Well, we understand not to be in the right or the left. You know, what I've noticed about this whole Rushka thing is that people have some very, very strong feelings. One way or the other. And the people that are against them, they want the people over there to suffer too. And the people that are against um, that are against us, which really isn't happening right now, there's a small minority of us, they're kind of going about it the wrong way as well. There is a middle, and that is staying outside of these conflicts, not taking a side. Understand that all of this is manipulation, and, and the devil's at the top just laughing, right versus left. And that's why you have not heard me condone the actions of Pew, Sit, and Spin over there. Because it would be real easy for me to do that, right? But of course I would never condone something like that. Because you stand on morality rather than right or left. And that's what Jesus is. He's the rock. He's the, the rock of morality. And it, sometimes it's difficult to see the forest through the trees. Sometimes it's difficult to see outside of the right left paradigm because we're so programmed to get triggered uh, i was there you know it's crazy they're starting to open up discussions in some of these stories right in, on the internet you know you go on you look at these news headlines and below there's a comment section they're starting to open up some of these things and people are so lost they're so lost you know and i get in there in the comments on some of them and i start having discussions with people i'm like how is this any different than what we did in the U.S. here 
over the past 50 years that we've been getting involved in other people's businesses despite all of the collateral damage how is this any different and they're like oh you must you must love that you know dictator i go no of course not you must well then why don't you just go live there you know so what is that that's the right left paradigm they're getting triggered they're thinking just because i have a, an opinion that's different than theirs that i'm somehow defending him no that's not the case all of this is indefensible what i'm pointing out is a hypocrisy and how we can get away with one thing and not get cancel cultured doing something a million times worse than what he's doing right now for far less of a reason we've justified these kinds of actions in places that are nowhere near our borders so you guys we're living in strange times right now we're living in very strange times where people are starting to lose their mind they're losing their ab ability to think critically they're engaged in team warfare in other words anything for the team my team wins no matter what my team does no matter how dirty and mean and ugly and evil they are it's my team and i'm going to stand up for my team and when you have people thinking in that way it is a very dangerous time to be living in now let's keep watching this here because here she's getting the tattoo now this is a very bizarre scene it's somewhat uh there's innuendo here as she's getting this on her lower back uh and so all of that has to do with uh serpent sim symbolism of how the serpent was with eve okay what serp the serpent did to eve it's all right here now i, I don't think i put much of that in here let's take a look here she's getting this thing and she's like wincing in pain but it's really innuendo for something else right now there's the uh the copy because remember this is all about clones and copies and isn't it and the ritual to actually do tattoo art is to first clone or copy it onto the skin understand this is all ritual you guys it's all ritual because we're going to be going over the same cloning aspect in interview with a vampire we'll be covering that tomorrow and it's the same thing there's twins in there there's cloning aspects there's one of the vampires that actually clones him he's like a mime he like mimics brad pitt so cloning is part of this it's about possession it's a ritual a tattooing ritual now let's keep watching this she wants the same red now what ends up happening is basically they discover she discovers that well we'll get into that later let's keep talking about this so she's at the tattoo shop and what you're really seeing here is this voodoo piercing ritual that ends up mind controlling the wearer just like a voodoo doll being pierced by needles and as we all know we're in the midst of a worldwide piercing ritual right now aren't we and if you don't know what i'm talking about tom can help you out in the chat if you're confused but we have to start to move away from using the general language on here because things are getting more and more controlled and tightened on this platform so tom will help you out about the worldwide voodoo ritual now the ink of the tattoo is significant in this episode as well as in real life we did a study last week about the huge toxic release of copper that's unbound from blue and green inks when you try to remove them now the blue and green inks by themselves tattoo ink do not um, they contain copper but it's bound it's it's basically not bioavailable for your body so it's not dangerous it isn't until the removal process now that brings a strange scripture to mind you can't pull up the tares without pulling up the wheat with it isn't that interesting when you remove the copper when you remove the blue and green inks that are copper laden it releases it which could kill the host in extreme instances of course so we have another metaphor don't we that ties in spiritually into this ritual now the plot 
of this episode says that the red blood uh, in the tattoo dye or the red dye is what's infected with this pathogen that causes hallucinations. But this is it isn't the red blood at all that's causing this, in my opinion. And they like to do these kinds of opposites, right? They'll tell you it's one thing, but it's really the exact opposite of it. So in the episode, it's the red blood that they blame on having this pathogen, but it's really the blue blood. And I'll tell you why. The blue ink. Because remember the blue eyes of the girl in the tattoo. They're very striking, aren't they? And that's why she's winking, because they're drawing attention to the eyes that are blue. Let's go back here and see if we can find that. So, there's something else afoot here, isn't there? Let's let this play out a little bit. I should I find it? There it is. See this here? The striking blue eyes and the tattoo moves. So it's it can go, it can go, she can wink or she could ju just have her eyes open. So that's really what they're talking about here. It isn't really the red. The red could be the whole, you know, that could play into the whole Scully and the red hair thing. But it's really the blue. Let's keep playing this here. In Soviet prison. We're controlling. I've always got. same red now ironically it's scully who's able to fight her sin sinful tendencies even though she has she wants the same red even though she has the red hair right like mine now you're gonna see this whole red haired symbolism thing throughout these kinds of episodes and films this isn't the only place and you know where you're going to see this because later in the week we'll be just we'll be covering the next season of Raised by Wolves, which is another series that came out. This is the second season, and it's all the same thing. Uh, there's a red-haired woman who worships the artificial intelligence. She worships serpents. But again, don't get hung up on trying to associate blame to people with red hair or you know the whole RH negative thing. I don't think that really plays into this unless you're in the elite. This is more, much more of a secret society and power thing than it is about physical characteristics. I feel different. It's like, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. It feels weird. I, uh, I can't see it. I... The resident downstairs, Kay Schilling, was reported missing. Some blood was found in her apartment. Not now, so the guy kills his neighbor because he thinks that she's talking about him because his tattoo takes over his mind and causes him to kill his neighbor. And what do they find in the blood? They find ryegrass mold in his blood, which he got from supposedly the red ink. But again, we determined it wasn't really the red ink. It's the blue ink. Let's keep watching here. Not hers. It had some uh, abnormalities. Well, a preliminary toxicology report found this uh, substance in the blood stains. Blood type was A and hers was O. So here it is ryegrass now we had found that ryegrass is copper dominant just a few weeks ago didn't we we were just talking about ryegrass being copper dominant and we were talking about it was the likely candidate for the notorious tear mentioned in the Bible that grows up along with the wheat. That even biblical scholars had done research and they associated ryegrass with the likely candidate to be the tear. Now, the ryegrass carries this fungus called ergo. And it's what causes hallucinations. Here's where you get the close-up of Scully's tattoo, and there you see the blue taint. 
the blue dot in the mouth that wasn't there before. Remember, I asked you to remember, but there it is. And this is what it, they were really getting at, wasn't it? The blue copper is the taint. When blue tattoo ink is removed, the copper releases into the bloodstream and can have toxic effects. So, what I don't show here is that Scully does confront the guy and tells him to try to overcome his urges. So again, this is all about ten, uh, tendencies, sinful tendencies. And so I looked up this ergo that's mentioned in the episode. And lo and behold, ergo is a fungus. And it affects wheat as well in some instances. And what's interesting about ergo is that it can induce the loss of offspring in the womb for both humans and livestock. Here's the Wikipedia page here, and I'll put this in the, the uh, comment section. I'll pin it in there. But it goes on to explain that this is actually used to induce a spontaneous loss of the child in the womb. So here you have a direct reference to the war of the serpent on the seed of the woman. Wow. That an ergot alkaloid was found in the blood. Now ergot is a parasite that lives off of rye and related grasses. Svo said that he used rye somehow in his ink. He may be subject to hallucinogenic ergotism, oral, visual hallucinations. Dangerous and unlikely behavior. So the guy tries to burn it off of his arm. It doesn't work. And Scully realized she's marked with this tattoo. So I don't know how much more clear it can get. But this is just crazy. What else? I think I had another thing pulled up here. Here's... An article on ryegrass ergo, which is again the mold that grows on the ryegrass. Uh, this is a particular strain that exists in Texas, East Texas. So this stuff is everywhere. Again, this is spiritual manifestations in the natural realm. This is why God tells you that his glory is seen in nature, in his creation. I believe it says that in the Bible somewhere. Um, and so we're supposed to be looking at these things. To get bits and pieces of truth to show God's glory. Okay. Now, let me go back into the chat, see what you guys are up to, because this is just unbelievable. Now, if you think this is all just sheer coincidence, we will be discussing almost the exact same symbolism in a vampire movie tomorrow called Interview with a Vampire. It starred, uh, let's see, it starred um, Brad Pitt, it starred uh tom cruise and a couple other huge actors from in the 1990s and you're going to see the same things you're going to see blue blood or hemocyanin based blood you're going to see tattoo needles you're going to see voodoo and you're going to see possession so hopefully you guys tune into that tomorrow um, i've got lots of shows already scheduled for this week things i've been working on we're going to be covering uh, Raised by Wolves, second season. That's all about Mithraism and sun worship. Okay. And what else are we covering this week? Look through these tabs. Oh, we're going to be doing a full walkthrough on the Siphon Filter game that we just talked about earlier in the show today. So, crazy times, right guys? Crazy times. Yes, exactly. It's not your blood. It's the faith that will bring you home. Thanks, Flossie from Vermont. But I hope we can understand, too, that our sinful tendencies can happen because of generational curses and our bloodlines. So some people have to fight harder to fight their sinful tendencies. And we all know this. We've seen people, and typically you call those people that, you know, one from the bad batch, or every family has an uncle like that, right? Sometimes these people struggle with addictions, and I believe this comes from some kind of generational curse or some bloodline issue. Okay, 
And it's very, very difficult for some people to fight against this. And God has grace and he has mercy. And he gave his son, didn't he? So. All right, I'm in the chat here. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks for Dean by Yah, Warrior for Truth. Thanks, Tom, for moderating today. Meredith, Stephanie, Yabba Dabba, Eric, Russell, Cat O. Thanks, you guys. All right. Have you seen the world map about dreams in different regions? No. That's interesting. All right. I've been praying for mercy, says Rachel. Many are called, but few are chosen. Thanks, Sandra, for letting everybody know that I was going to be a little bit late this morning. Thanks, Veritas. Jenny said, this made me cry. It means so much to me to confirmation of what I experienced. Bless you. Bless you, Jenny. God is good. Yes, he is all the time. All right, I'm going to put these links up for you guys because um, some of you are chomping at the bit to check out this Russian family. Really cool, really cool video there and all kinds of videos. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care and be safe, everyone.